What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we've got our Week 10 NFL game picks outright versus the spread along with our locks of the week. And if you enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe. Also, check us out online at adpfantasy.com. All the support these last few weeks since we have gone live has been absolutely awesome. Thank you guys for that. For those of you that haven't checked it out, all the details in the description. You can go ahead, become a part of the ADP community, join the free newsletter, get early access to NFL game picks like this. Also, become a member, get personalized fantasy advice at all times, help you win your leagues. But for now, let's get right into it. We kick things off on Thursday Night Football with a divisional clash between the LA Chargers at the Oakland Raiders. The Chargers, 4-5, and five, coming off one of the most impressive victories of Week 9 as they dominated the Green Bay Packers. The defense got it done. The rushing attack, successful. Encouraging to see after the change of offensive coordinators. And we will follow this to see if it continues on Thursday night. For the Raiders, they're 4-4, four and four, also victorious in Week 9. Uh, it took them a while to secure that victory, but nonetheless, they beat the Detroit Lions. Their car looked good. Josh Jacobs continues to do his thing. And that duo, along with guys like Waller and Williams, have been getting it done for the majority of the season. The question is, will we see this continue versus an improving Chargers defense, especially with their edge rushers? I don't think the Raiders will have as much success as they did versus... Uh, a Detroit Lions defense that has been giving up a bunch of yards so far through the season. Uh, and on the flip side, the Chargers offense. Look, we know they've had their struggles. That's why it's so important to see how they bounce back week to week after that offensive coordinator change. You know, last week, check mark there. And I think potentially they could uh, string together two uh, in a row as far as wins are concerned because this Raiders defense has been the weak point of the Raiders team so far. And even though the Chargers offensive line is an issue, I think Phillip Rivers will have a big game here. I think all the big uh, playmakers for the Chargers with guys like Hunter Henry, Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler, Melvin Gordon, Mike Williams, they could all potentially explode here. There's no one on this Raiders defense that really scares me. Uh, I think the Chargers offensive line will be able to hold up in this matchup. Even though these two teams are divisional rivals and they know each other well, I have to give the edge to the Chargers here. Maybe if this was a stronger Raiders defense, I'd go ahead and think twice. But as of right now, Chargers advantage here, even if it's on the road. Uh, I like them to win this game and put together two wins in a row and potentially go on a little bit of a streak here as the Chargers usually do uh, at the middle point and later on in the season. Uh, on the spread, Raiders plus one and a half. It's really close, kind of low, almost a pick em. So for that reason, I'm going to go with the Chargers, not only outright, but also on the spread. Next, we continue our divisional clash trend as we have got the Atlanta Falcons at the New Orleans Saints. The Falcons one and seven, the Saints seven and one, both coming off the bye week, which came at a very opportune time as both these teams were missing some serious superstar power for the Falcons, Matt Ryan for the Saints, Alvin Kamara. Now, Matt Ryan is expected to play even though on Wednesday somewhat limited. Alvin Kamara definitely expected to play. Uh, so both will give a big boost to their respective offenses. Obviously, the uh, attendance of Matt Ryan is much more important even though we did see Matt Schaub uh, kind of keep the Falcons in the game versus Seattle last time they played in week eight. But this New Orleans Saints defense is in a whole nother level compared to the Seahawks. And honestly, it's ultimately why I give the edge to the New Orleans Saints. Now, don't get me wrong. I think this will actually be a very competitive game. Throw out the records here because historically speaking, the NFC South opponents have always played each other close and especially the Falcons and the New Orleans Saints, they are in some shootouts at least once every single year. I think that'll be the case again. Now, Matt Ryan returning will obviously add a nice boost to this offense. Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Austin Hooper, Devonta Freeman, plenty of targets to go around. It'll be interesting to see what Lattimore does versus a guy like Julio Jones, or maybe it'll be versus Calvin Ridley. Uh, regardless, That'll be a matchup to watch for the majority of that game. 
But again, I just think these two teams know each other so well, and they tend to be in these type of shootout games that that won't matter too much. To me, the problem is that the Falcons' defense is just such an absolute crutch for them that as good as their offense has been and can be, the defense just breaks at a certain point in time, and then the offense isn't capable of scoring on every single possession, and that's where they fall behind. I think at the end, that's what's going to happen here uh, towards the fourth quarter, but I still don't think it's going to be a two-touchdown type of victory from the New Orleans Saints, which is what the spread suggests. Minus 12 and a half, very high to me here. Uh, maybe if Matt Ryan somehow doesn't play, uh, then I'd be on board with that spread. But as of right now, he plays, and I think the Falcons stay competitive. They put up a bunch of points uh, alongside with the Saints. You know, I could see this being a 10-point margin of victory for the Saints, maybe a little bit less, but not close to that 13 mark. So I will take the Saints outright, but on the spread, I like the Falcons. Next, we've got the Buffalo Bills at the Cleveland Browns. The Bills, 6-2, and two, taking care of business versus the Washington Redskins last week like we all expected. That was an easy one. While the Browns, 2-6, and six, coming off a bewildering loss versus the Denver Broncos, a subpar offense with a backup quarterback. We picked the Browns as one of our locks of the week in Week 9, but they completely dropped the ball. The offense continues to look questionable the head coaching play calling continues to look awful the defense didn't get the job done versus brandon allen go figure which is the reason why i am absolutely shocked that the browns are favored in this game are you kidding me look i realize that the bills so far this schedule has been extremely easy and the two teams that they've played that have actually been good the Patriots and the Eagles they've both lost to so maybe from that perspective it makes sense and the Browns do have the talent which you have to figure has to click at some point but this Bills team isn't all that different from that of the Denver Broncos which just dominated the Browns heck I think the Bills you could argue are as good if not better offensively due to the quarterback situation uh the defense it's been up and down so far this season uh, but versus that offensive line of the Browns, I'd say they can go ahead and have some success. Right now, I realize the Bills haven't really beaten anyone. I'll go ahead. I'll agree with that. But until I see the Browns put it together, uh, and until I see Baker Mayfield, you know, not hold on to that ball for so long, until I see an offensive play calling from the head coach that makes sense I can't trust this Brown squad now I will say if the Bills lose here which is completely possible I'm not ruling it out uh, honestly I'd probably stay away from this game one way or the other you automatically will question their legitimacy and rightfully so for the remainder of the season and it'll be very tough to pick them again I think this will probably be a lower scoring game. I do think it'll be close for what it's worth. But right now, from what I've seen so far, and maybe the issue with the Browns is the play calling uh, of the head coach. But I don't think that's going to change anytime soon this season. Maybe, you know, if it gets really bad in a couple of weeks, but not right now. Uh, so I don't think we can see this offense to its full potential just yet. So for that reason, I'm going with the Bills here. I'm going to pick them out right on the road. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if the Browns win, like I said. The spread minus two and a half in favor of them. But since I like the Bills barely, barely to win outright, I will also take them on the spread. Next, we've got the Detroit Lions at the Chicago Bears. NFC North Divisional Clash. And whoever wins here will get the pleasure of avoiding last place in the division. Now, both these teams coming off of losses. The Lions 3-4-1. and one. Tough loss versus the Raiders. But the defense couldn't really make all that many stops. And the Lions continue to play up to the level of their competition. But they come up on the wrong side of the contest more often than not. While the Chicago Bears, 3-5. and five, Absolutely atrocious performance versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Specifically in the first half. Only 10 yards after two quarters. Are you kidding me? And at one point that was negative yardage late into the second quarter 
absolutely inexcusable. The craziest part, however, is that they had a chance to win late in the fourth quarter, but as you kind of expected, the defense was gassed and couldn't stop the Philadelphia offense, and the Eagles got a well-deserved win here. Now, the storyline in this Week 10 contest will be, will the Detroit Lions defense step up? Uh, a defense has been giving up yardage here the last couple of weeks in bunches, or will we see the Bears' weakness, that being the Mitchell Trubisky-led offense, have a decent outing? And even though maybe it's likelier that Trubisky gets it done, I just have such a hard time trusting Trubisky, who has looked absolutely awful. That offensive line hasn't looked good. The play calling has been questionable. And if you like the Bears in this game, it means you are saying that Trubisky is going to be the reason why they win this game. To me, I've been saying it since day one about Trubisky. This guy is not a franchise quarterback. He is a backup quarterback at best. And heck, look, maybe we'll see a decent performance from him similar to the Washington Redskins uh, where, you know, he looked serviceable. But this Detroit Lions offense is a lot better than that of the Redskins. And Matthew Stafford has been a dark horse MVP candidate. We know what we're getting from the other two sides of the football. The Detroit offense has been really good. The Bears defense, even though they haven't been elite, have still been good and have limited opposing pass catchers. So again, it comes down to the struggling units. The Detroit defense or the Mitch Trubisky-led offense. Which one of those units breaks out? Now... The way I could see the Bears potentially winning here is if Matt Nagy just has an amazing play-calling performance similar to last year, and David Montgomery is featured. But I don't, again, have enough confidence to, to say that that will happen either. For that reason, you know, it might be a little bit of an unpopular opinion, but I'm going the Detroit Lions on the road here to get this win. I think it's going to be incredibly close. I think it'll be very hard fought. I think both teams will have a chance to win. But I'm picking Matthew Stafford over Mitch Trubisky 10 times out of 10. Now, even though I like the Lions outright, it wouldn't shock me one bit if the Chicago Bears win this game. That's why, honestly, I'm probably staying away from this contest. And regardless of how you feel about the outcome, I'd probably split my outright pick and my pick against the spread where the Bears are favored by minus two and a half. So because I'm taking the Lions outright, I'm going to hedge my bets a little bit and go with the Bears on the spread because if they do win, I think it can be by at least three points. Uh, but again, if you guys feel differently, I'd suggest you guys split your picks outright and on the spread here just because this game could absolutely go either way. Uh, it wouldn't be shocking one way or the other. Next, we've got the Baltimore Ravens at the Cincinnati Bengals. The Ravens 6-2 and two, coming off the biggest win of their season, beating the previously undefeated New England Patriots. We said potentially watch out for this result. Lamar Jackson had a great day. Uh, the Baltimore defense was also uh, up to par as Jimmy Smith returned in that secondary. Really made a difference here. Uh, while the Cincinnati Bengals coming off the bye week 0-8, they're going to be starting Ryan Finley here. No more Andy Dalton. He's been benched. Time to see what we've got at the backup quarterback position. But honestly, I don't think that's all that fair to the Bengals. You know, obviously they're still winless and they've struggled mightily, but I don't think you can say it's been the fault of Andy Dalton fully. It's That offensive line has been terrible. The defense has been even worse. And even though this is a home game for them, I think the Ravens are going to dominate the Bengals. I think this is one of the more clear-cut picks of the week. I like the Ravens to have a great day offensively. I think Lamar Jackson is going to run all over this Bengals defense. Uh, I think the defense of the Ravens is going to have a field day with Finley uh, at the starting quarterback position. And I think the Ravens not only win, but they also cover a somewhat large spread, which is right now plus nine and a half for the Bengals. Even though this is a divisional contest, which sometimes, you know, tends to uh, prevent people from picking that high of a spread. Right now, nothing is going in favor of the Bengals and the Ravens are getting a little bit healthier quietly and quietly. Lamar Jackson, another MVP candidate here. I think he adds to the resume. The Ravens get the win outright and on the spread. Moving on, we've got the Kansas City Chiefs at the Tennessee Titans. The Chiefs 6-3. and three. Great win 
over the Minnesota Vikings without Patrick Mahomes. The offense continues to prove that it can hang in there uh, as long as you give them a capable backup quarterback. While the Titans finally got their first loss of the season with Ryan Tannehill versus the Panthers, the defense also struggled to contain Christian McCaffrey. And more bad news for the Titans is Patrick Mahomes will likely suit up for week 10. But honestly, even if Mahomes doesn't play here, I would still take the Kansas City Chiefs to win this game. And honestly, I think that's all you need to know here because this Chiefs offense is still elite. They looked like they figured out the running back situation last week with Damian Williams having a pretty dominant performance, even though a lot of that came on one big play. But still, this Chiefs offense desperately needs to get a consistent rushing attack, and it needs one of those guys between Williams and LaShawn McCoy to emerge. I think it's Damian Williams' job at this point in time, uh, and I think he's probably the younger, uh, more agile, more capable running back for the Chiefs. And if Patrick Mahomes plays here, then forget about it. I like the Chiefs all the way. I honestly think the Chiefs defense could have a decent outing here versus Ryan Tannehill. A bit turnover prone. And if the Chiefs start to put up a bunch of points, the Titans offense is going to have to air it out. And there will be opportunities for turnovers. We've seen it time in and time out that the Titans offensively, they aren't all that consistent. Uh, they don't really have any playmakers that scare you offensively. So I'm going with the Chiefs here, even though it's on the road. Uh, and to me, it becomes almost a lock, especially if Patrick Mahomes plays. I think if he returns, he has an absolutely sensational game here. Potentially gets back in the MVP conversation. So I'm taking the Chiefs out right on the spread, plus three and a half. Uh, I'll take the Chiefs to go ahead and uh, cover that spread and, and, and win in that category as well. Maybe I'd think twice if Mahomes doesn't play but as of right now Chiefs outright and on the spread next up we've got the Battle of New York the New York Giants at the Jets but unfortunately probably not as enticing as people would have hoped as these two teams have a combined three wins heading into week 10 the Giants two and seven the Jets one and seven the Giants lost to the Dallas Cowboys but look that score wasn't as indicative of how close that game actually was. It was a little bit closer than the score would say, but Daniel Jones continues to be turnover prone, and that's the issue here. Uh, while the Jets, 1-7, just lost the Miami Dolphins. Are you kidding me? Uh, pretty much uh, the Jets, I can't even believe they beat the Dallas Cowboys a couple of weeks back. I'm just absolutely stunned at that. But this offense and Sam Darnold, uh, really struggling. The Jets defense struggling. The Giants defense struggling. Who wants to win this game is what I'm trying to say. Who do you have more faith in, Daniel Jones or Sam Darnold? If you can answer that question confidently, pick that side to win this game. Uh, normally, I would say Daniel Jones, and, and I kind of still lean that way. Um, but without Evan Ingram uh, and potentially without Sterling Shepard again, this Giants offense missing two of its biggest playmakers, but that just means it'll probably be the Saquon Barkley show. While for the New York Jets, they could be without Le'Veon Bell receiving a second MRI of the season on Monday. That is definitely concerning, even though the head coaching staff saying it's all good. Uh, you know, it's still a little bit troubling. And if Le'Veon Bell doesn't play here, man, uh, I would definitely take the Giants not only outright but on the spread now like I said outright I do tend to favor the Giants a little bit because right now I've got a little bit more faith in Daniel Jones than I do in Sam Darnold specifically also the head coaching situation and the play calling of the Giants I don't know what the hell Adam Gase is doing at this point in time I really don't um, they've got some good pass catchers uh, they've got a great running back offensively these two teams are very similar defensively they both struggle so it's anybody's guess who's going to win this game the Jets plus two and a half on the spread so the Giants are favored uh, I'd go ahead and suggest for you guys to track the Le'Veon Bell news I think that could be a big decision maker if he does play maybe you go ahead and pick the Jets on the spread which that's what I'm going with at this point in time I'm hedging my bets here again I'm going Giants outright but the Jets on the spread
Next, we've got the Arizona Cardinals at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Cardinals, 3-5-1, the Bucs, 2-6. And, and even though the records aren't exceptional, I think this could sneakily be one of the most exciting and higher scoring game of Week 10. The Cardinals, tough loss to the San Francisco 49ers on Thursday night. Honestly, if Kyler Murray gets another possession late in that fourth quarter, you could argue that the 49ers would have their first loss of the season. Obviously, that wasn't the case as they ran the clock down. But great performance from the Cardinals nonetheless, while the Bucks, wow, tough loss for them as well. In overtime, the Seattle Seahawks, uh, the defense, though, just couldn't stop Russell Wilson. However, when it comes down to this matchup, let's start with the revenge factor. This time, it's Bruce Arians versus his former squad in the Arizona Cardinals. I'm sure he's going to be motivated to call a hell of a game here. And he's going to give the green light to Jameis Winston to air it out. Another important thing to keep note of here, uh, Bruce Arians coming out and saying Ronald Jones is their guy. He's gotten enough confidence in him to ride him, supposedly. How big of a factor will he have in this contest? It'll be interesting to see. But I still think it comes down to Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and potentially, very importantly, O.J. Howard, who's set to return from a couple of week absence from injury. And we know how much the Arizona Cardinals struggle with the tight end position. Maybe this is finally the game where O.J. Howard breaks out. Uh, it'll definitely help this Bucks offense, which has been missing his presence since the start of the season. While for the Arizona Cardinals, look, Kyler Murray, he's proven the last couple of weeks that he is very much so uh, a quarterback that has to be game planned for he's figuring it out through the air he's a dangerous threat on the ground David Johnson potentially going to come back for this contest as well that's going to be a nice addition for the Cardinals even though the Bucks have been great at stopping the run so I think it's going to be an aerial showdown uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that it's going to be a close game here uh, I think the X factors that Kyler Murray brings to the table uh, is going to be enough to keep the Cardinals close but ultimately, I'm going to go with the team that I think has the better defense, specifically the better run defense. And to me, that is obviously the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So I'm going to give them the edge here. I think they also have the more impactful offensive pass catchers. Uh, that combined with Bruce Arians being a little bit more of an experienced head coach, I give them the edge here. I think the Bucs win this game. But the spread, minus four and a half, I think a tad bit too high. I think this will be very close as far as the contest is concerned, about three to two point margin of victory. Uh, so for that reason, I'm going to take the Cardinals on the spread. Continuing on, we have got the Miami Dolphins at the Indianapolis Colts. The Dolphins one and seven. Congratulations, Miami. First win of the season versus the lonely New York Jets. Ryan Fitzmagic in full effect. But they did suffer some injuries and some losses uh, last week. One, Walton uh, at the running back position and then also Preston Williams. Uh, so it'll be the Kalen Balaj and Devontae Parker show. While for the Indianapolis Colts, 5-3 and three, uh, losing Jacoby Brissett in that game versus the Steelers last week. But they still had a chance to win at the end. But uh, look, Adam Vinatieri missing that field goal. His kicking struggles continue uh, this year but even with that and even with Bursett potentially missing this game and Brian Hoyer being under center which I do think is the smart move people have said Bursett has a chance to play but I think there's absolutely no reason why you ha have to rush him back get him a little bit of rest get Hoyer he can be a great game manager get you the victory over the Miami Dolphins that defense can't stop anyone uh, and I think the Colts' defense is a lot better than that of the New York Jets, so they're going to limit the Dolphins as well. I think this will be the Marlon Mack show offensively for the Colts. And honestly, it doesn't have to be anything different. So I'm giving the Colts the edge here, even without Jacoby Bursett. I like them to win out right. But I will say, without Bursett, the spread at minus 10.5, a little bit too high for me. So I'm going to put that little caveat that if Bursett doesn't play I'm taking the Dolphins on the spread if he does then I feel a little bit more comfortable with Indy there next we have got the Carolina Panthers at the Green Bay Packers the Panthers five and three nice little victory over the Tennessee Titans after the shellacking they took by the 49ers last week to get back on track Christian McCaffrey dominated once again uh, while the Green Bay Packers 7-2, very disappointing loss versus the L.A. Chargers last week. They just couldn't get it going offensively. 
But look, uh, if you have to make me choose which one of those is more likely to be an outlier, the Panthers going on a winning streak or the Packers going on a losing streak, uh, I definitely think it's the Packers losing streak. I think they get back on track here in a big way at home in Lambeau Field. I think Aaron Rodgers has a huge game versus a Panthers defense that can be exposed. Even though they've had success, especially getting to the quarterback, we've seen in years past and this year, as a matter of fact, that the Panthers defense struggles versus elite quarterbacks. And Aaron Rodgers definitely is that uh, the Panthers' rush defense hasn't been all that great either. So Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams, probably in store for a big workload. I look for Devontae Adams, who obviously played last week, to be another week healthier, to be more involved in this offense. He will continue to draw targets. And I expect the Packers to get a big win here. Now, for the Panthers, uh, a lot of people probably are going to say, well, Christian McCaffrey is going to do his thing. Kyle Allen is going to continue to be a game manager. And that formula's worked for them. It'll continue to work for them. But this is the problem with the Panthers with Kyle Ander Allen under center. Obviously, Cam Newton on IR. So it's going to be the Kyle Allen show for the remainder of the season. The problem with Allen is the most important stat that he has going for him is his win-loss record. And... That really doesn't mean anything other than just being a nice, you know, thing to point at. But statistically speaking, performance-wise, all he's done is hand the ball off to Christian McCaffrey. The Panthers don't ask him to do as much as they would if Cam Newton was there. And this offense doesn't have nearly the same ceiling as it would with Cam Newton there. They just simply will not be able to beat elite level competition with Kyle Allen there. I 100% fully believe that. Uh, I think they're going to go ahead and potentially get blown out here. I think it could potentially get as bad as what we saw versus the San Francisco 49ers. Now, the difference here is this Packers defense, even though it has improved, I don't think is as elite as that of the San Francisco 49ers, even though I think it'll have a good day. I think they're going to get ahead uh, early in this game, the Packers, that is, and that'll probably force the Panthers to some extent to abandon the rushing attack and just have a bunch of dump off screen passes to Christian McCaffrey. And then when Kyle Allen does force the football, it'll probably lead to some turnovers. So I'm picking easily the Green Bay Packers here to win this game. The spread minus five and a half. Maybe it seems a little bit high for you, but I am fully confident that the Packers win. And with the Panthers likely struggling against better competition, I think the Packers can cover the spread too. Continuing on, we've got the LA Rams at the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Rams 5-3 and three coming off the bye week, while the Steelers 4-4 four and four after beating the Indianapolis Colts in that close matchup. They have a home game here uh, with that Steelers defense that's been performing pretty well. Uh, you know, there's some things to be excited about, but ultimately I think the weak link here and the thing that's going to hold back the Steelers is Mason Rudolph under center. He has been a backup clearly uh, in terms of his quarterback play. Now, James Conner, whether he plays or not, that's going to be a storyline, but I don't think it's going to really change all that much what the Steelers want to do. Jalen Samuels can go ahead and rush the football effectively and catch those screen passes uh, from the quarterback, which, again, that's what the Steelers want to do offensively. They don't want to uh, force Rudolph to beat any defense through the air because that's going to result in a lot of turnovers, and especially with a guy like Jalen Ramsey now roaming the secondary of the Rams, I could see this being a long day for Mason Rudolph. I think Aaron Donald is going to wreak havoc uh, on Rudolph. Obviously, the Steelers have a good offensive line, which is what's kept them, you know, floating uh, above water to some extent so far. But if the Rams come out and uh, get out with an early lead here, I think the Steelers are going to be done quickly. Now, for the Rams, look, a couple things that are concerning. Brandon Cooks going to miss this game dealing with that concussion issue, but they've got guys to go ahead and replace him. Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, Josh Reynolds. I think Todd Gurley could get more involved with the absence of Brendan Cooks as well. Uh, I think a week off probably did him some good. So the Rams with Jared Goff, I like that offense a lot more than that of the Steelers. Defensively, to me, it can almost be a wash. So 
I'm giving the edge here to the Rams. I like them to go into Pittsburgh and that get this victory more so because of the Mason Rudolph factor for the Steelers. So give me the Rams outright. The Steelers, the spread for them, not all that high, plus three and a half. I think the Rams, if they win, they can go ahead and cover that. So I'll take them on the spread as well. Getting to Sunday Night Football, we've got the Minnesota Vikings at the Dallas Cowboys. The Vikings 6-3, and three, tough loss versus the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, a guy like Dalvin Cook struggled a little bit. He's a big part of that offense. Uh, and then just the Vikings defense couldn't stop a guy like Tyreek Hill, couldn't stop the big plays. Well, the Dallas Cowboys, they're 5-3, and three, coming off a nice victory over the New York Giants. Uh, Dak Prescott did his thing. Zeke did his thing. The defense... Uh, were able to generate a couple turnovers, and that's all it took to beat a below-average Giants team. But this is a different story. The Vikings are a better team, and Kirk Cousins has proven that even though he is inconsistent, he is capable, of, when he gets it going, to have a good game. Now, Adam Thielen, probably not going to play here, so that is a loss for the Vikings offensively. Stephon Diggs uh, can go ahead and take that role. But we've seen him be hot and cold. I expect a bigger role for a guy like Kyle Rudolph. And Dalvin Cook is really potentially going to have to shoulder the load here. Uh, Kirk Cousins versus Dak Prescott. I give the slight edge to Dak Prescott because of his mobility, because of that offensive line. He's got just as many weapons around him with Zeke, Gallup, and Amari Cooper. The Cowboys defense has also had some nice uh, outings as well. I'm going to go ahead here at home, take the Dallas Cowboys. I think this is going to potentially be a higher scoring game with a low margin of victory for whoever comes out on top. I think it's going to be close, both teams with a chance to win. So I'm going to hedge my bets here. I'm taking the Cowboys outright on the spread, minus two and a half. I wish it was a little bit higher uh, for the Cowboys. Then I feel better about taking the Vikings on the spread. But regardless, I'm taking Cowboys out right and the Vikings on the spread. And finally, getting to Monday Night Football, we have got the Seattle Seahawks at the San Francisco 49ers NFC West Divisional Clash. And finally, an entertaining Monday Night Football game. The Seahawks at 7-2, that overtime victory over the Bucks, where Russell Wilson was absolutely unstoppable. The 49ers at 8-0. Uh, that clutch victory over the Arizona Cardinals. They are now the only unbeaten team left in the NFL. But to me, this is almost a must-win game for them, as crazy as that sounds, because look, the Seahawks are only you know one win away from the 49ers, and San Francisco has to play Seattle twice, and this is really where their schedule kind of picks up with some tougher opponents. So in the blink of an eye, the 49ers could find themselves from leading that division to potentially being a wild card team in the NFC playoff hunt. So watch out for that. This is incredibly important for the 49ers. Now, obviously, they have the much better defense. We saw Seattle get exposed last week versus Tampa Bay. We've seen uh, just a lot of other opposing offenses have success against them. And they're going to need to tighten it up a little bit here if they want to give Russell Wilson and that offense a chance but even with that being said, I still like Seattle. And it comes down to Russell Wilson. He's been the clear MVP uh, so far of this league. He has been absolutely incredible. And now he gets Josh Gordon as well. That's almost unfair. Obviously, he's going to be a little bit rusty joining this offense for the first time. It's going to be growing pains. But it'll be interesting to see what that chemistry looks like at this point in time. Maybe Gordon will take some of those Will Disley roles, especially in the red zone. Uh, but there's so many weapons for the Seattle Seahawks offensively. But look, not to be outdone, the 49ers, uh, they've got a great rushing attack. And with the addition of Emmanuel Sanders, they're legitimate alongside George Kittle offensively too. But it's going to come down to, I think, Jimmy Garoppolo being unleashed. If, if, Seattle, uh, if Seattle is going to be defeated here, Jimmy Garoppolo is going to have to be the reason why. So for that reason, even though I do like Garoppolo and I do like the 49ers and I like that defense, I think Russell Wilson, I think a better offense beats a better defense more often than, often than not, especially in today's NFL. So I'm going to take the mobility of Russell Wilson, that magic that he has, and uh, some of that speed with Tyler Lockett and that physicality with DK Metcalf and Josh Gordon to go ahead and upset the San Francisco 49ers. I am taking the Seahawks outright. I think this will be an incredibly close game as these NFC West 
uh, contests usually are. I think both teams will have a chance to win. I think it's going to be very close no matter what, which is why I love the Seattle Seahawks on the spread. Look, even if you don't like Seattle outright, which I totally understand, you should absolutely go with them on the spread. The 49ers at minus six and a half. I think that is way too high. I'm absolutely rolling with Seattle on the spread. These games have been close. Seattle has been hitting on all cylinders offensively. They've got the MVP in Russell Wilson. They cover on the spread. So with that, we wrap up our pickums. Now looking at our locks of the week, we start with the Falcons at the New Orleans Saints. Even though I think the Falcons can cover on the spread, I'm taking the Saints all day out right at home. That defense is way too good. And uh, I think the New Orleans offense will take advantage of that struggling defense of the Falcons. Next, Baltimore at the Bengals. This one is simple. Taking Lamar Jackson and that improved Baltimore defense versus a struggling offensive line, a backup quarterback, and an awful Cincinnati defense. Continue on, the Kansas City Chiefs at the Tennessee Titans. Give me the Chiefs here. If Patrick Mahomes returns, especially uh, that offense proved last week that even with just a capable quarterback, they can go ahead and contend with a lot of teams. I think Ryan Tannehill is going to go ahead and struggle here. I am taking the Chiefs. Next, Miami at the Colts. Even if Jacoby Brissett doesn't play, I like Brian Hoyer to go ahead and lead the Colts to a victory. I think the Colts defense will go ahead and limit uh, some of the success that the Dolphins had last week. And Marlon Mack will go ahead and be able to dominate. Then, finally, the Carolina Panthers at the Green Bay Packers. Give me the Green Bay Packers here to win this game at home. Kyle Allen is not equipped offensively to go up against these elite teams. We've seen what happens when he does. I'm taking Aaron Rodgers in a rebound game at Lambeau to win easily. So with that, we wrap things up. And as always, let me hear it in the comment section. Did you agree, disagree with these picks? Let me hear it along with any other questions you guys might have. And as always, if you enjoyed, make sure to like, subscribe. Also check us out online at adpfantasy.com. Your support means so much for us. Join the community, become a part of the free newsletter for exclusive early content. Also become a member to get personalized fantasy advice. All the details in the description. But for now, I'll see you guys in future videos.